Welcome to our lecture online. Now our next example deals with charge distributions instead of point charges. So we have a different technique to solve that. And later on we'll learn about Gauss's technique or Gauss's law where we can use other type of techniques to solve problems. But here we need to take a look at this and we realize we have a linear charge density. We have something that's six meters long and it carries charge at 40 microcoulombs per meter. So when we multiply that, that means there's 240 microcoulombs of charge on that. And we're trying to find the electric field at this location right here. Now notice the relative distance. And realizing that the, this part of the charge distribution will cause a much greater effect over here for the electric field than something that's much farther away. So we're going to have to integrate across that charge distribution. The way we do that is we're going to take a small little piece of that and say this little piece has a small amount of dq on it, so a small amount of charge and that, look, that particular dq is a distance of x away from the point of interest. And so that little dq is going to cause an electric field to exist at that location and so let's draw that electric field and uh, that will be a small amount of electric field in this direction because it emanates away from a positive charge and we call that a DE. Alright, now DQ, well how much charge is that? Well notice that we have a charge density so that means that DQ has to be equal to the charge density times the length of that little segment which is going to be a small little DX an infinitesimally small distance DX. And so that means that the electric field at that location, the magnitude of that, is going to be equal to K times the charge that causes it, which is dQ, divided by the distance away from that, which is x squared. And of course that means that dE, the magnitude of that, is going to be equal to K times the charge density times dx over x squared. Which means if you want to know the entire electric field for the entire piece, right, the entire strip with charge on it, then we're going to have to integrate over that distance. So that means that E, the magnitude of that is going to be the integral of all the DEs, and that's going to be from X equal, and we're going to take this distance right here. We start at being at a distance of four meters away, and we are going to end up at a distance 10 meters away. And that is equal to the integral from 4 to 10 of dE, and dE is equal to K times the charge density times x to the minus 2, we'll bring it to the numerator, times dx, which is going to be equal to the integral from 4 to 10. And uh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these constants outside the integral, makes it a little bit cleaner, so we can write this as K times lambda times the integral from 4 to 10 of x to the minus 2 dx. So it simply becomes a matter of integrating that. So that means that this is going to be equal to k times lambda times x to the minus 1. We add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, and we're going to evaluate that from 4 to 10. So that means that e is equal to k times lambda uh, we could put a negative sign in front of that, so let's do that. So E is equal to negative K lambda, that's the negative one right here, times 1 over X evaluated from 4 to 10. So we plug in the upper limit, so we get minus K lambda times 1 over 10 minus 1 over 4. And then if we distribute the negative sign, that means that this is a positive K times lambda times 1 over 4 minus 1 over 10. Common denominator is 20, so this becomes equal to k times lambda times 4 goes on 25 times, that's 5 over 20 minus 2 over 20, which means that this is equal to 3 20th of k times lambda. All right, uh, now we're ready to plug in the numbers and see if the units work out, so this is equal to 3 over 20 times k, which is 9 times 10 to the 9th newton meter squared per coulomb squared, and lambda is equal to 40 microcoulombs, that would be 40 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, oop, I forgot my units, coulombs per meter. There we go. 
So see that one of the coulombs cancels out, one of the meters cancels out, and we end up with, I got an extra meter in there. Uh, that's because this is in terms of meters. I left off my units on the meters. So this is meters, this is meters. <laughs> units are important, and this is meters. I'm missing a meter somewhere. So now, uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, that's meters in the denominator, not in the numerator. Yeah, I'm blocking this. Uh, so it's meters in the denominator. So we have meters here, meters there, and divided by meters here. And so that means the other meter gets canceled out as well. And we end up with newtons per coulomb. For a while there, I lost a meter somewhere. OK, finally, we can grab a calculator and figure it out. We got 9e to the ninth times 40e to the 6 minus times 3 divided by 20 equals, and we get 54,000 54, newtons per coulomb. Now that's the magnitude of the electric field. Since it's pointing to the right, if we want to write in vector format, we get the electric field is equal to a positive 54,000 newtons per coulomb in the x direction. So that's ultimately what we were looking for. And that is how it's done when you have a charge distribution. And keep track of the units.